This is the third video of the thorax series. In this video, I will be talking about the heart, the internal feature, the blood supply, venous drainage, and the nerve supply of the heart. So the heart is uh, a muscular pump. It's almost the size of the fist, which is situated in the thoracic cavity on the left hand side between the right and the left pleural cavities occupying the lungs. The area this where it is situated is called as mediastinum and especially in the middle part of the mediastinum is occupied by the heart and the blood vessels which are coming out from here. There are four valves which control the back flow of the blood. Um, there is two circulations. Uh, there is a systemic circulation. So, the heart is pumping to the to the body and then the deoxygenated blood goes back into the pulmonary circulation to get oxy, uh, oxygenated. So here we can see the right border of the heart, the inferior border of the heart. This is lying over the central tendon of the diaphragm, the left border of the heart and the anterior surface of the heart. The heart is the pyramidal in shape and so the base of the heart which is if I take this out, this area is the base of the heart. So that lies on the posterior aspect and formed by the left atrium. The chambers which we are looking here, this is the right atrium. This area here is the right ventricle and this area here is the left ventricle. These two projection on each side are called as auricle or ear like projection or ear loop like projection. These are the projection are coming from the right atrium and the left atrium. They come and clasp around the pulmonary artery. This structure here is the pulmonary artery and this is here is the arch of aorta. So on this heart let me show you some of the external feature. This is the inferior surface of the heart, apex of the heart, left border of the heart and the right border of the heart. Anterior surface of the heart which is in a relationship to the breastplate or the costal cartilages. Anterior surface of the heart is mostly formed by the right ventricle a little bit of the left ventricle comes on the on the left side. The vessels, this is pulmonary trunk coming from the right ventricle. This is the ascending part of aorta coming out from the left ventricle of the heart. This little area which is projecting and sort of clasping on the right side and the similar structure is clasping from the other side. This area here is these are auricles. This is the right auricle and the left auricle. These are projections from the right atrium and the left atrium. This is the apex of the heart which is mostly formed by the left ventricle. The base of the heart lies over the posterior thoracic wall or in the posterior mediastinum. This area here is formed by the left atrium and we can see the openings of the pulmonary veins. 
there are four pulmonary veins which come and open into the left atrium. So on this prosection, I am going to show you the different layers of pericardium and this is the superior end of the body, this is the diaphragm, so this is the lower end of the thoracic cavity. We are looking the heart in position and with its blood vessels and the left lung has been reflected on the side. The outermost layer is the fibrous pericardium. This is the layer which I am holding on and this fibrous pericardium attaches to the adventitia of the blood vessels. So this is where it is the superior end and inferiorly it blends and if I just lift the heart, this is the area where it fuses with the central tendon. So I am holding up this reflection of the fibrous pericardium over the central tendon of the diaphragm. So let me demonstrate the serous pericardium. Serous pericardium has two layers, parietal and visceral serous pericardium. Parietal covers the inner surface of the fibrous pericardium. So this shiny layer is parietal serous pericardium. The visceral layer covers the heart. So this layer which I am holding is the serous visceral pericardium. These two layers are continuous at the root of the blood vessels, just like pleura. The nerve supply of the fibrous pericardium and parietal serous pericardium, it gets its nerve supply from the somatic nerves which are supplying the area they are covering. As far as visceral layer, it gets its nerve supply from autonomic nerves which are supplying the heart. This is the position of pericardial cavity. The pericardial cavity lies between the parietal and the visceral layer of the serous pericardium and it is filled by the pericardial fluid which helps in the lubrication. So let me show you some of the relationship on the left side of the heart. This is the root, left root of the lung. Anterior to that, this nerve which I follow it all the way to the diaphragm is the left phrenic nerve. This is the pulmonary artery I am holding right now. This structure is the pulmonary artery and this is the arch of aorta. Between the pulmonary artery and the arch is this ligamentous cord is called as ligamentum arteriosum. Crossing the arch, this is the left vagus nerve and a nerve which is winding around the ligamentum arteriosum is the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. External anatomy of the right atrium right atrium forms the right border of the heart, opening of the superior vena cava, opening of inferior vena cava. This is small projection is the auricle. The groove between the right atrium and the right ventricle is the coronary sulcus. which is occupied by the right coronary artery. There is a groove which runs from the superior vena cava to inferior vena cava. This area here is called as sulcus terminalis going from the two terminals. 
Let us look into the internal anatomy of the right atrium. On this specimen, the anterior and the lateral wall of the right atrium has been taken out. Superior vena cava opening, bringing the deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body. Inferior vena cava bringing the deoxygenated blood from the lower part of the body. So, now I am pointing the opening of the coronary sinus that brings the deoxygenated blood from the heart. On this side here, my probe is in the opening of the right atrioventricular valve or tricuspid valve. In the interatrial wall, this depression is fossa ovalis. In intrauterine life, this is an opening called as foramen ovale. Through this, the blood from the right atrium passes in the left atrium bypassing the lungs. Let me show you some of the internal features of the right ventricle. This is the anterior surface of the right ventricle, pulmonary trunk, a window has been opened in the anterior wall. My probe is in the tricuspid valve which is opening in the right atrium here. So, there is the pen going into the right atrium through the tricuspid valve. There is the anterior cusp. These are cordy tendini and that is the anterior papillary muscle. This structure which is attached to the anterior papillary muscle I am pointing it, this is the moderator band or septo marginal band which is attaching to the septal wall or the inter interventricular septum here. So, this is called as moderator band which brings the Purkinje fibers or the conduction fibers straight into the base of the anterior papillary muscle. This opening here is going into the pulmonary trunk and there is the pulmonary valve. These are semi lunar valve. I am holding the one of the cusp There is another cusp, we can see these cusp, so these are the three cusp we are looking at forming the pulmonary valve. Internal anatomy of the left ventricle, two auricles, right ventricle, left ventricle. opening the cavity. On this side, we can see the anterior papillary muscle. Posterior papillary muscle of the mitral valve, there is the anterior cusp and the posterior cusp. The valves are three times thicker than the right ventricle. This area where my probe is, is the aortic valve. So, let me demonstrate on the external surface of the heart, the grooves or the sulcus of the heart. There are three major ones, the coronary sulcus separates the atrium, the right atrium, the left atrium from the ventricles. 
and it fits like a crown. It goes around the hearts. Perpendicular to that, there are two grooves which separating the two ventricles. Anterior interventricular sulcus and posterior interventricular sulcus. So, on the right side of the coronary sulcus, this is the right coronary artery coming from the ascending part of aorta. It runs on the anterior surface of the heart. At the lower border of the heart, it gives the marginal branch. turns on the posterior side of the heart where it gets posterior interventricular descending branch which is lying in the posterior interventricular sulcus. So, let me show you the course of the left coronary artery. We are looking at the left border of the heart. This projection here is the left auricle. I will remove that. There is the pulmonary artery. We are looking at the ascending part of aorta. This is your left coronary artery. After traveling for a centimeter or so, it divides into two terminal branches, anterior interventricular descending branch and the circumflex branch. Anterior interventricular descending branch passes on the anterior surface of the heart supplying the two ventricles goes towards the apex of the heart and will anastomose with the posterior interventricular branch. Circumflex branch travels in the coronary sulcus giving the branches to the left ventricle and it may anastomose with the right coronary artery in the coronary sulcus. So, when it comes to the blood supply of the posterior surface of the ventricles, the word dominant is used and more in 80 percent of people, it is right coronary artery dominant area. That means, the posterior interventricular branches comes out from the right coronary artery. In 15 percent of people, it can be left coronary artery dominant where the posterior ventricular branch will be coming out from the left coronary artery from the circumflex artery. Great cardiac vein starts at the apex of the heart, draining the area of the anterior surface of the ventricle. This vein comes to the coronary sulcus where it changes its name and now it is called as coronary sinus. The coronary sinus runs on the posterior aspect of the coronary sulcus all the way to reach to the right atrium where it drains its contents. On the posterior aspect of the heart, in the posterior interventricular sulcus starting from the apex, this vein is called as middle cardiac vein. It drains the posterior surface of the ventricle and drains into the coronary sinus. On the anterior surface of the right atrium, there are usually the anterior cardiac veins which directly drain this area into the right atrium. the water who's that standing dressed in red wait in the water must be the children that Moses led and God's gonna trouble the water 